So this is maybe something you've never considered before, but there is actually other games that you can play with your dog other than fetch and tug. Don't get me wrong, fetch and tug are brilliant games, but they need to be played correctly for them to be effective. Something I was taught by Nando Brown, an amazing dog trainer, is there's no such thing as a suicidal squirrel. So a lot of the games that we will play with our dogs are part of our dog's natural hunting sequence. So they will be naturally rewarding for our dogs. But we've got to think about how we present our toys because squirrels don't run up to dogs and wave themselves into our dog's face to be eaten. So remember, there's no such thing as a suicidal squirrel. Let's take a closer look at how to play tug properly. Watch how I move the toy away from Chip to begin with to build up a bit of chase. Now he has the toy, watch how I keep it down low and I keep moving side to side to keep him engaged. It's really important you also let your dog win the toy. Nobody wants to play a game where their opponent wins all the time. Ah, Fetch and catch are another two games you can play. I tend to use them as rewards during training as they can offer a higher value reward. Don't worry if your dog doesn't like toys, you can always do these games using food. So fetch is a great game to play with your dog if they absolutely love chasing things. Um, if your dog likes to chase things and then struggles to bring them back um, or struggles to let go of the toy, there's two things you could try. You could try use, having two toys, two identical toys. So if you've got tennis balls, have two tennis balls, throw one tennis ball out, then when they start coming back towards you, show them the other one. As they spit that other tennis ball out, throw that one. So you can play a game of swapses. The alternative, if your dog loves playing chase and a bit of tug, you could maybe invest in getting a flirt pole. And this really mimics them having a full speed chase, catching their prey, and then being able to tug it and dissect it if that's how they prefer to hunt. Um, know your breed, get to know how they like to play, um, and it'll help you choose the right game. Another one of my favourite games is finding treats. Uh, finding treats can be super versatile and really suitable for a wide range of dogs, all dogs. Um, so it's low impact for puppies and low impact for um, elderly dogs or maybe a dog that's got an injury. Uh, you can also take find it games on a walk really easy with you um, just by sticking a few treats in, in your back pocket. Play and find it. Start super simple and drop the tree straight in front of your dog and ask them to find it. You can even point to the floor to help them out. To make it harder, ask them to wait, throw the treat out and then ask them to find it. This actually also teaches them some patience and impulse control so they're not actually rushing straight towards the tree all the time. You can then chuck the tree while your dog's not looking and then ask them to find it. They now have to use their nose, which is really where the fun begins for your dog. Good boy. Good. You can also play a similar game of find it using plant pots or plastic cups by simply hiding the tree underneath the pots and then asking your dog to find which pot the tree's under. Hide and seek used to be one of my favorite games to play as a kid, and now you can do it with your dog as well. For this, you may need someone to hold your dog while you go hide, or as you can see in this video, I actually take Chip and put him in a downstay, out of sight, I then go and hide and then I'll call him to find me. Yeah. Watch for his sigh of relief 
when he finds me. I also add in a little reward of his tennis ball for finding me as well, just to strengthen up our relationship. 